The fourth posture in the 24 form is brush knee and push. And the nice thing about the name of the posture is it matches what you're doing so perfectly. All you're doing is brushing the knee and pushing. However, this one also has a transition getting you into the movement from the white crane spreads its wings, which was the last posture that we did in this form. And it also has three repetitions like parting the horse's mane did. So you don't get to just do one repetition of it. You have to do it three times before we can call it good on this particular posture. So as usual, we're going to start with the transition first, and then we'll actually work on the posture itself. So we just finished our last posture, which was white crane spreads its wings. So from this posture, our transition, it's kind of like you're using your hands like windshield wipers as they come across. But you're not doing that pattern over and over. We're only going to do it a couple times. With the right hand up, the left hand down, you're going to drop the right hand and bring it across the front of you, down so it's next to your left shoulder. While you do that, you sweep up with the left hand so it's level with the shoulder. Right hand is palm down, left hand is palm up. So from here, push across with the right, it drops down, palm down next to the left shoulder, left hand comes up, palm up, back behind. So again, right hand pushes across, sinks down, left hand comes up. Once you're there, the right hand is going to drop down and come across as the left hand comes across the top. So come across. Now the right hand drops down, the left hand comes up. They push across the front and you pivot to face the direction you were facing when you began the form. So if I started the form facing you, when I do this move, I should be facing you also, which I am, so we're good. So one more time, right hand up, left hand down, push across. The right hand drops down next to the left shoulder as the left hand comes up. There's this moment where they're both at the same height. So if this hand, right hand is getting to the shoulder before the left hand's there and it drops down before the left hand gets there, your timing's off. You want the two to get there at the same time and continue from there. So the right hand comes across, drops down, left hand comes up. Right hand drops down, left hand continues up. They push across the front and then I pivot to the right. Now through this whole move, I'm rooted in the right leg. So when I'm here, my weight's in the right leg. This one's just barely touching. When you do that pivot to the side at the end of this transition, you're going to put just enough weight on the left leg to pivot the right foot so that you can face forward. And then all your weight in your root goes back into the right leg. Now if I just finish white crane spreads its wings facing you, then the right hand comes across, down to the left shoulder, palm down. The left hand comes up, palm up to shoulder height. They get there at the same time. So from here, I push across and end up here. Then the right hand drops down as I bend the left arm. They push across the front at the same time and I pivot to my right here. So from the white crane, the right hand pushes across the front. Left hand comes up. Drop the right hand, bring up the left hand, push across pivot to the right. From here, right hand's up top, left hand's down below, push across with the right hand, bring the left hand up. Drop the right hand, bring the left hand up, pivot to my right. Push across with the right, bring the left up, continue to bring the left up as the right hand drops, push across the front, and pivot to the right there. Push across with the right, bring the left hand up. They're both at shoulder height at the same moment. The right hand continues to move down, the left continues to move up. Push across the front and pivot. Rooted in the right leg. Once again, push across with the right, bring the left up. Drop the right, continue to bring the left up. Push across the center and pivot. So now I'll do it again facing as if I'd started the form facing you. And we'll go into the actual brush knee and push move. So we start with the white crane, push across with the right hand, push across with the left hand up high and pivot. Once you get here, you're gonna push down toward the right shoulder with the left hand and the right hand's gonna sweep up, palm up, straight out to the right side. So you come across to here the left hand continues down, the right hand continues up, and at the same time, instead of leaving that foot out there, you're going to step in there. 
So once you're here, the good news is the footwork for this brush knee and push move is exactly the same as the footwork for the um, parting the horse's mane move. So if you got really good at that footwork while we were working on parting the horse's mane, then you at least know what to do with the lower half and all you have to worry about is the upper half. So once we're here, we do the same circle step with the left foot, gently touch with the heel. As you set that toe down, you're gonna bring the arms in. So you bend the right arm and bring it in and you start to drop the left arm here. Once they're in front of you, then you start to turn the body and shift forward and push. Left hand brushes the knee, right hand pushes there. So you have the brush knee and push. So let's go through that much again and then we'll go through the next two repetitions of this movement. From the white crane spreads its wings, push across, go through your transition, right hand drops, left hand comes up, pivot to the right. Hands continue through as you bring the left leg in. Circle step with the left leg, gently touch with the heel. As you set that toe down, bend the arms, bring them in front, and then as you turn, use that body motion of the twist of the waist and the torso to push through here. Then you rock back. Just like before, you're gonna turn away from the center line. This time the right hand pushes over the top, down next to the left shoulder, left hand sweeps up. Just like the transition from the white crane spreads its wings, only instead of starting here, we're starting here. We rock back, turn, bring the right foot in. So the left hand's palm up, the right hand is next to the left shoulder, palm down. Circle step with the right foot, gently touch with the heel. Set the toe down as you begin to bend the arms. Shift forward, twist, and push. Rock back, turn. Hands come in, so left hand palm down by the right shoulder, right hand palm up, extended out at shoulder height. All the weight's in the right leg. From here, circle step with the left. Gently touch with the heel. Set the toe down. As you set the toe down, bring the arms in. And push through. With the brushing the knee with the left hand, pushing with the right hand. From the white crane, we'll go through our transition. Right hand pushes across. Drops down. Left hand pushes across. Pivot to the right. Hands continue. Bring the left leg in. I circle step with the left leg. Gently touch with the heel. As I set that toe down, I bend the arms, bringing them in front of me. And as I twist, I push out and brush the knee with the left hand, pushing out with the right hand. Rock back. Turn to the left. It's like my right hand is pushing across the front. Bring the feet together. Right hand palm down next to the left shoulder. Left hand palm up. Again, circle step. Gently touch with the heel. As I set that foot down, bring the arms in front, turn, and push. Rock back, turn, feet together. Circle step with the left foot, gently touch. Set the left toe down, bring the arms in front. I'm gonna brush with the left, push with the right. So before I move on to another angle, I'm going to point out some things that are usually kind of troublesome for this particular move. The first most important thing is, of course, as you do that circle step, make sure you step wide enough so that when you turn, you have the solid base in both directions and you aren't walking a tightrope. The second thing is to make sure as you push, you're pushing forward with the opposite hand as the leading leg. So what I mean is if I have my left leg forward, I'm pushing with the right hand. If you find that you're pushing with the same hand, as the leg that's forward, so if my left leg is forward and I'm pushing with the left, something got messed up, you need to go back, check your transition from the white crane, make sure everything is going where it's supposed to, so that you end up with the left leg forward and the right hand forward, or the right leg forward and the left hand forward. So it's always opposite when you do this push. The next two things to look out for as you're doing the push in this brush knee and push, is make sure your elbow doesn't go out to the side as you're pushing here, you're wasting a lot of energy and creating a lot more tension in your push by having your elbow out to the side. You wanna drop that down so it can line up with the force coming from that back leg straight out here rather than coming around. 
Another thing is make sure your push stays in close so that your arm can stay in close. Don't let the push come out here. It's not a push like this. It's a push here, coming straight out from that back leg and through. Now, a lot of times when people try to keep that arm in close, it tends them to push that shoulder up. And that's usually because they're trying to turn too soon. And then to keep the arm in, they have to push the shoulder up to try to pull it in close. So what I mean is when you do your circle step and you're getting ready to, to set that foot down and bring the arms in, a lot of times people turn their torso then. And then to be able to push through and keep the arm in close, they have to pull it in close and it pushes the shoulder up. And that creates a lot of problems. You don't want your shoulders brought up building extra tension. You want them sunk and relaxed while you're doing Tai Chi. So the way to fix that is when you do your circle step, keep your body facing the same way. When you set the toe down and bring the arms in, keep your body facing the same way. It doesn't turn yet. When the arms are in front of you, then as you turn, you can keep that arm in really close to you, turn and push out, and it doesn't make you bunch up the shoulder trying to keep that arm in. But if you do your circle step and you start to turn and try to bring this in, it's either gonna push the elbow out to the side or it's gonna make you pull that shoulder up to try to keep the arm in close. Neither of those things are good things. So when you do this move, do your circle step, gently touch. Bend the arms, still facing forward, and when they're here, turn so that you can push straight out, keeping the shoulder relaxed, keeping the arm lined up. You don't have the elbow coming out to the side, and you don't have the shoulder bunching up, trying to keep that arm in close. And the last thing while you're doing this push, lead with the fingertips, then settle the palm. So as the push is coming out, you want to imagine that maybe there's a wall in front of you, and when your fingertips touch the wall, then you settle the palm and push with the palm into the wall. Now, at least the way I learned it and the way that I teach it is to make sure that's the way it is. For my students, don't push with the hand, just palm facing forward, pushing through. That's not necessarily a wrong way to do it. There are plenty of good instructors, plenty of good schools that teach that way. And so I'm not saying that they're wrong and I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers here, but the way that I learned it and the way that I'm gonna teach you is you lead with those fingertips and you settle the palm. Now, the reason for that is not because if you're gonna you know, push someone or strike someone with the palm, that you would lead with the fingertips and then settle the wrist because that's a good way to break your fingertips, to hit someone that way, unless you have really good conditioned fingertips, really good strong hands. That's not the way to lead into a strike. If you're gonna strike someone, you wanna push with the part that you're actually striking with. The reason that I have my students do it this way and the reason that I was taught to do it this way is because as you're settling into the very last part of this motion, if you learn to coordinate your body motion with the settling of that wrist as you push through, then instead of just a push, you have a push with a little extra oomph in the strike from the wrist action. So as you come through, you can push with that wrist and get a little bit more out of it. So by doing this, with that settling of the wrist at the end of the motion, you help train your coordination and you help train your body so that you can generate that power more easily. And it also helps fine tune the connection of your body moving together with, when you have to time that instead of just pushing through. So it's a little more work, but I think it's worth it. So my students do it that way. That's the way I teach it. If that's not the way you learned or not the way your instructor teaches you to do it, that's fine. Um, but that's the reason why I have my students do it that way. So from the white crane, you push across, push across, pivot to the right. Hands follow through as you step in with the left leg. Circle step with the left, gently touch with the heel. Set the foot down or set the toe down as you bring the arms in front of you. Turn through, brush the knee, and push. Rock back. As you turn to the left, your right hand pushes across the center line. Shift, establish the root in the left leg. Bring the right leg in here. Circle step with the right foot. Gently touch with the heel. As you set the toe down, bend the arms. Bring them in front. As you shift and turn, push through with the left hand. Rock back. Turn to the right. Left hand pushing across the center line. Root in the right leg. Feet together. Left hand palm down, right hand palm up. Then one last time, circle step with the left, gently touch with the heel, bend the arms as you set the foot down, turn, and push through. Push across with the right, 
up high, push across with the left up high, pivot to the right. Right hand sweeps up, left hand drops to shoulder height. Circle step with the left foot, gently touch with the heel. Set the toe down as you bring the arms in front of you. Turn and push. Rock back, turn to the left. Bring the feet together. Circle step with the right foot, gently touch. Set the toe of the right foot down as you bring the arms in front. Turn and push. Rock back, turn to the right. Left foot comes next to the right foot. Circle step with the left, gently touch with the heel. Drop the toe as you bring the hands in front. Twist and push. Push across with the right hand up high. Push across with the left hand up high. Turn to the right. Right hand comes up as the left drops. Circle step with the left foot. Set the left toe down as you bring the arms in. Twist and push. Rock back, turn to the left. Circle step with the right foot. Gently touch with the heel. Set the right toe down as you bring the arms in front. Twist and push. Rock back, turn to the left. Hands come to shoulder height. Circle step with the left foot, gently touch. Sink, twist and push. From the white crane, push across with the right hand up high. Push across with the left hand up high. Turn to the right, sweep up with the arm. Circle step with the left foot, gently touch the floor. Set the toe down as you bring the arms in front. Twist and push through, settling the wrist at the end of the motion. Rock back, right hand pushes across the front as you turn to the left. Hands come together, or at least to the same height as the feet come together. Circle step with the right foot, gently touch. Bend the arms, twist, push through. Rock back, turn, feet together, circle step with the left, gently touch with the heel, bend, push through. From the white crane, push across with the right hand up high, push across with the left hand up high, pivot to the right, hands sweep through as you bring the left foot in. Circle step with the left foot, gently touch with the heel. Bend the arms as you set the front toe down. Push through, settling the wrist of the right hand at the end of that motion. Rock back, turn to the left. Feet come together. Circle step with the right foot, gently touch with the heel. Arms come in as you set that toe down. Push through, settle the left wrist at the end of that motion. Rock back, turn to the right. Root in the right leg, bring the feet together. Circle step with the left, gently touch with the heel. Bend the arms, push through. So when you finish this movement, you're gonna have your left foot forward and your right hand out. That's where you stop before we go into our next move. So do it three times, you're gonna push with the right, turn, push with the left, turn, push with the right. And that's where it stops. So that's all that there is to the brush knee and push. Same thing with this one is with the um, parting the horse's mane. If there's any part of it that you're not really sure on or if it was unclear, check out the um, brush knee and push video that I have in the stepping set and line drill video series. It's in a playlist, so you can just go through the playlist and find that video pretty easily. And that entire video is all about just brush knee and push. So anything that I may have missed here is gonna be covered in that one. Hopefully between these two videos, it makes this movement very clear for you, very easy for you to understand. Thank you so much for watching.
In this video, I want to talk to you about a product that I've been using for a lot of years now, something that I absolutely love. And if you're into taking supplements, you will probably absolutely love this too. It's called Daily Complete, and it's put out by a company called Pure Trim. This is what it looks like. And the reason I love this so much is because one, it's a liquid, so I don't have to swallow pills when I take it. Two, it has over 200 nutrients in it. So instead of taking several different supplements, trying to get the same amount of nutrients that I can get out of this bottle, I take one ounce of this and I'm done. Now this is one of the products that I used extensively while I was over in China training, and I think it was invaluable for me for keeping my energy up and making sure I was getting proper nutrition while I was doing strenuous training all day long. Now the last thing that I really like about it, it's awesome, is it's just simple to take. So if you're like, all right, it's time to take my supplements with my lunch or whatever, you literally just open it up, get a little ounce glass out, pour yourself an ounce, done, swallow it. And that's it, you're done. You've taken your vitamins for the day. Another nice thing is it tastes pretty good. It basically just tastes like oranges and a hint of vitamin flavor to it, if you know what vitamins taste like. So anyway, I hope you try it out sometime if you're into taking supplements. If you're not, I still hope you try it out and I hope you learn to love it as much as I do. Daily Complete.